Okie dokie. Here we are. We're going to continue talking about functions and their relationships. Um, we did one in my previous slide when we did an introduction of functions, of how to think of them um, as we look at metaphors in all real life. But also we looked at how we can do that, numer do that numerically. Um, well, algebraically we can also find a function um, because we can identify that relationship. Now the key thing is when we talk about function relationships is it all revolves around for every input there is one and only one output. Okay? Or for every element in X in set A, there is only one element Y in set B. All right now, in here, we are talking about algebraically, and we're going to find Y is a function of X. Now, it's important that we identify this because we always want to read this context because if this can be switched around, and it changes the relationship. When we say Y is a function of X, that means of refers to our what is being inputted. Well, it's of x, so that means that is our input. All right, that's our input. That's our domain. That's our independent variable. Y is a function of x. That means the y, whatever's left over, is our output. So when we do this, we can think about back to algebra 1 or 8th grade math, or whenever you learn this, is that to do this algebraically, well, we're looking and trying to isolate um, this into a function expression. How we generally do this is by isolating one of the variables. And we always isolate the output. So that means when we have this, we solve for the output. If we can solve for the output and we only get one, um, and we only get one input that will give us the output, we find our answer. So let's try this out. Okay? When we have this, all right, in all this case, we're in this case, we're solving for the output, which in this case is the y variable. So let's go through these different examples. In the first one, I'm going to solve for y. So when I do that, I'm going to subtract the 4x squared plus the 8, and we have 8 for y squared. Now when we solve for y squared, remember, we take the y and we take the square root. But we have two distinct different values, the plus and minus. Because we have a plus and minus, that means y equals plus or minus, well, whatever I plug in for x, I get two outputs, right? So I get a plus and a minus. So in this case, because I have two outputs, all right, like a little plus and a minus output, this is not a function. We go over here and look at example number two. And example number two, all right? We see this, we solve for y. Well, we have y, we're going to add 3x squared to the other side. We have a plus 4 equals y. Well, y equals 3x plus 4. Well, that's okay. All right, there's, for every input, there's one output, because there's no plus or minus, just one value. So yes, this is a function. Yes. All right, function. That's it. One input, one output relationship. All right. Going to the next one, and I'm going to uh, erase some of this. So it's not as confusing. I might have to go back to see some of this stuff. But for right here, once again, we solve for y. All right, because that's our output. Remember, we're looking back at our expression. All right, when we have this, um, we solve this, and we have to take the cube root, x squared equals y, for every input, one output. Yeah. All right, there's no plus or minus, so yes, this is a function. All right, for this one, we solve for y to the fourth. We have the fourth root. Now, because we're taking the fourth and even root, we have two different values, okay, that we can have for y. Oops, we have x right there. So we have the fourth root plus or minus the fourth root of x equals y. Function, not a function. Not a function because we have two different values for y for every input. I plug a 1 in there, I get plus and minus. All right, for my output. I plug a 2, I have the fourth root of 2. All right, plus or minus. That equals y. So two different outputs for every input I plug in. I get the plus and minus. All right. Make sure that people understand that. Let me just think. I plug in a 1. Okay. I would have plus or minus the fourth root. Sorry. 
of root. Uh, here it's a plus of a 1, which would be plus or minus 1, and that would equal y. Two different values for y. Okay. Moving on, the last couple. For this, we have the square root. Now, the square root by itself is possibly a function. When I solve this, I have the square root of x minus 3 equals y. If I plugged in 1 in this case, well, I would have, all right, the square root of 1 minus 3 equals y. Is there a plus or minus? No. So, yes, this is a function. In our final one, we have the square root. Now, when we have the square root, okay, not square root, I mean absolute value, in absolute value, we can have a positive negative number. Because remember, absolute values always make everything positive. Plug in a negative, it's a positive y. So when we solve our absolute values, we have to use a plus and a minus. So when we have this, we actually have solve for y. We have plus and minus, 5 minus 6x, two different equations. And therefore, we have two different values. So for every input, we get two outputs. And for that one right there, this is not a function. So to summarize, how do you figure out if equations are functions? You solve, all right, key thing, all right, you need to solve for the output. You need to solve for the output. How do you determine what the output is? The output in the expression is, all right, whatever is not the of the variable of something, okay? Y is a function, so that's my output. It's a function. Y is a function. Function means that is the output. So Y is a function of X, X being the input. So you solve for that. Do you have a plus or minus? Are two different outputs? The answer is a function.